The storm is gone, but the danger is not. Yesterday, monster waves from Super Typhoon Feng Wang slammed Philippine coastlines, leaving 1.4 million people displaced and entire highways underwater. Some now fear these epic surges could trigger a tsunami. Experts say the threat is real, just not in the way most people imagine. What is actually happening beneath the waves, and how much risk remains along the battered shore? A satellite loop captures the last spirals of Feng Wang as it leaves Luzon behind, but the devastation on the ground is unmistakable. Flood maps from Pagasa, updated at midday, show entire stretches of Aurora, Albe, and Cagayan provinces still underwater. The latest NDRRMC bulletins confirm more than 800,000 people displaced, with confirmed deaths now rising to eight. Key highways have vanished beneath mud, water, or collapsed bridges. The Nueva Ecija Aurora Road is closed at kilometer 105 due to landslides. The Baler Casigran Road is impassable where a bridge washed out. In Albe, the Maharlika Highway near Kamalag is choked with lahar and flood debris, with only a single lane open for emergency vehicles. The Legazpi Tobacco Road remains blocked by mud flow and overturned vehicles. North in Cagayan, the Cagayan Apayao Road is cut off by a collapsed bridge and deep floodwaters, while the Magapit Gadaran Road is restricted to one way traffic as water levels refuse to drop. Power is out for more than 120,000 households along the coast, and many villages remain isolated. Emergency shelters crowd highway junctions where relief trucks halt at roadblocks. Drone footage reveals the scale. Entire barangays surrounded by water, rooftops barely visible above the flood, and rescue boats weaving through debris. Each blocked road, every submerged field, is a reminder that the danger lingers long after the storm's eye has moved on. The official maps and closure notices, stamped with source and time, leave no doubt, this is not over. Recovery crews and families alike face a landscape still shaped by water, waiting for the next wave or warning. Long after the winds have faded, the ocean keeps sending waves ashore. Along the battered coastline, the danger now comes from residual swell, long rolling waves that can continue to arrive for up to three days after a typhoon. These swells are not just leftovers. They are the ocean's way of releasing stored energy, and they do not need visible storms to be deadly. Instrument data from Pagasa's Baylor Tide Gauge, just north of the storm's landfall, captured a sharp 30-centimeter water level pulse at 4.14 a.m. on November 10, 2025. The trace shows a sudden spike from 0.7, 2 to 1.02 meters, then a rapid drop, all within two minutes. This is not a tsunami signal, but it is proof that the sea's energy is still arriving in bursts. Source, Pagasa, Station PH. Baylor, 01, 2025, from 0413 to 0415 Philippine time. A Pagasa meteorologist says long period waves mean Cebu, Samar, and Bicol coasts may see hazardous surf and flooding 24 to 72 hours after the last band of Feng Wang dissipates. Stay off shorelines until tide stations trend downward. Source, Pagasa, 2025, Philippine time. Beyond the numbers, the physical risk is clear. Water that surged inland during the storm now rushes back out, creating powerful rebound surges in river mouths and bays. These flows can reverse without warning, flooding villages for a second time. In the surf zone, floating debris such as roof panels, tree limbs, and fishing nets turns the water into a minefield, endangering rescue teams and anyone returning home. Even as the sky clears, the ocean remains unpredictable. Coastlines are not safe yet. Keep your distance from the water, follow local warnings, and wait for confirmed downward trends at tide stations before returning. Screens light up with warnings, rumors, and shaky videos. Overnight, a single clip claiming a midnight tsunami threat spread across Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube, shared more than 280,000 times in just a few hours. Hashtags like hashtag monster wave and hashtag Uwan tsunami trended in the Philippines pushing panic through group chats and community pages. Some posts show families packing up, others feature sirens blaring in the dark, all with captions urging people to flee coastal barangays immediately. The original video, uploaded by a storm-chasing channel, overlays dramatic music on grainy shots of churning surf. Within minutes, copycat accounts amplify the message, 
each adding their own speculation or political spin. Share graphs spike as screenshots of supposed official warnings circulate. Many are doctored or outdated. The comment sections fill with fear, confusion, and calls for help, drowning out quieter voices linking to actual Pegasa and 5OLCS bulletins. Amid the noise, a simple question keeps resurfacing. Can these monster waves really trigger a tsunami? Or is something else fueling the fear? In a crisis, the difference between rumor and reality can be a matter of who you trust and where you look for answers. Rumors can spread faster than the waves themselves, but the science behind tsunami warnings is built on hard evidence and a strict chain of responsibility. In the Philippines, the task of separating fact from fear falls to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration, and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. Each agency monitors a different part of the threat pipeline. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration tracks meteorological surges and residual waves, while the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology assesses seismic activity and underwater landslide risk. A seismologist from the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology explains that slope failures can generate dangerous waves even without a quake. Our sensors look for any sudden pressure change that may signal such failures along the trench. This vigilance is not theoretical. Vigilance is how we find the signals that matter. On November 15, 1994, a magnitude 7.1 earthquake off Mindoro triggered a submarine landslide and a local tsunami that killed 78 people. That event changed how agencies coordinate. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology now operates a round-the-clock network of tide gauges, dart buoys, and seismic stations, all feeding data to national and local officials. When a sudden sea level spike or a seismic tremor appears, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center issue preliminary statements within minutes. If the anomaly is confirmed, alerts move to local governments who order evacuations. If not, the advisory is canceled and the public is updated. This system is designed to catch real threats while filtering out panic. The chain is only as strong as its weakest link, so every instrument and every bulletin matters. As new scenarios develop, it is this blend of vigilance and verification that keeps communities safe. Most forecasts now show wave heights slowly dropping along the eastern seaboard. Satellite-based models from the Japan Meteorological Agency and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration agree that the main pulse from Feng Wang is decaying, and coastal risk maps are being downgraded in real time. For most towns, this means a gradual return to normal, roads reopening, power lines repaired, and the ocean's surface smoothing out. A scientist at the University of the Philippines Marine Science Institute says that wave energy can travel for days, but unless there is a new trigger, the worst is over for the broad coastline. The bathymetry graphic for Malele, however, tells a different story just below the surface. In these submarine canyons, a single underwater slope failure can unleash a localized wave, even after the typhoon has passed. Recent sonar surveys show a fresh slide scar in the Malele Canyon head, estimated at 6.2 million cubic meters of displaced sediment. That is enough to move water quickly and catch nearby villages off guard. While the big regional threat is fading, the risk of a sudden local surge remains. Agencies are watching these hot spots closely, alert for any sign of a rogue wave forming where the seabed has been weakened. A major offshore earthquake, magnitude 6.5 or higher, can change everything in minutes. 5 LCS, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, operate seismic stations that scan the Philippine Trench because a tectonic slip could trigger a true tsunami. When a quake hits, the detection chain begins. First, sensors confirm the magnitude and the location. If the threshold is reached, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center issues a preliminary alert. Deep ocean dart buoys then check for abnormal sea level changes, looking for a spike of 20 centimeters or more. Tide gauges at the coast must show a rise of at least 30 centimeters above baseline before a full warning is sent. If these steps align, local governments activate sirens and order evacuations. The red flags are clear. A sudden offshore quake, an official tsunami advisory, water pulling back from the shore, or a sharp surge after a calm period. Green flags mean the opposite. No seismic activity, stable readings from all sensors, and an official all-clear from Pivolks or the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. 
Stay alert for these signals. For real-time updates and verified warnings, tap subscribe and follow official agency feeds. Your awareness is your best defense. Today, tide gauges still track every surge along the Philippine coast. Vigilance is not just caution. It is survival as ocean patterns shift and climate extremes intensify. The next wave may not announce itself. Awareness is our strongest defense against whatever the sea decides to send next.